The reason why I don't trade many New York Stock Exchange stocks, you're not going to get that $9 candle that you can in a video or that $12 can in Tesla or Amazon because there's somebody watching the and controlling the order flow, right? Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Hope everybody had a good day of trading. Um, for some reason last night, couldn't sleep. Don't ask me why. Tossing and turning all night. I had like literally two hours of sleep. Completely exhausted today the whole day. But hey, three cups of coffee later, I'm still alive. Anyway guys, hope everybody's doing well. So last couple of nights, uh, last couple of days actually, um, you know, we had some pretty good action uh, from the bulls two days ago. We kind of talked about how the you know the sellers got really tired. You could see it. Uh, even the names that were being sold pretty aggressively in the last month, they just kind of stopped uh, going down. It was more of a fade than anything else. And yesterday was kind of the first time you saw Beta just really wake up, right? You saw Tesla wake up yesterday. Uh, you saw Roku wake up yesterday. And even though um, I didn't want to label today as kind of a bullish day because, again, we all knew the levels, right? And we'll get to the levels in a second and what it possibly could mean for tomorrow. But what I did want to, you know, what I did want to kind of give the bulls kind of an extra day to see maybe they can start reclaiming some macro levels. And that's exactly what we saw today. And if you are, you know, if you've been watching this broadcast and, you know, been following the long levels or just been doing your own research and kind of knowing where these levels were important and where uh, these levels were finally going to start, you know, getting some steam. Well, today was a per perfect example why, you know, technical analysis works, why levels uh, need to get reclaimed, why stocks don't stop randomly uh, at any channels. And here's a perfect, you know, case study, right? You know, we had uh, this battleground area, that 317 level that we, you know, if you've been watching this broadcast, we've been talking about the 17 level at nausea. Nothing was going to happen until uh, we reclaim the 17 level. Well, we will reclaim the 17 level. And here we are, right, guys? Here we are right back to uh, very familiar territory. So the Bulls did a great job here reclaiming. They did a great job here reclaiming. They finally reclaimed this little micro battleground state, what do you want to call it? And now we are right over here. If you guys notice, this 50-day moving average is right in front of us again. It's Groundhog's Day. And now the bulls are either going to uh, swim tomorrow or they're going to sink. There is absolutely no room for interpretation here. If you're one of these people on social media who fights with other people about this stock is going higher, this stock is going low. No, there's nothing, to, there's nothing to argue about. Okay. 321 got rejected here. 321 got rejected here. If you look at today's highs, 320.75, right? Got rejected here on uh, anticipation of Biden's whole infrastructure plan. And so this is it. This is the line in the sand. Tomorrow, uh, is also the last day of the week. Uh, the market is closed on Friday uh, for Good Friday. And again, for all you guys who are uh, celebrating Easter, happy Easter, uh, early Easter there as well. Uh, but yeah, tomorrow, I mean, th this is it. This is one of those days that you really don't need to uh, overthink. You have your watch list uh, for tomorrow's session. It's going to be obviously uh, all technology. Again, you don't have to be too creative. And if they confirm macro levels, you're going to see a pretty aggressive pull up on a lot of names that were dead money. So maybe weren't participating um, as aggressively as you'd like the last couple of days, but just the theory of Q's reclaiming big levels. And this is a pretty big level, right? The 50 day moving average. If we can reclaim this 50 day moving average for tomorrow, then hell, then this is, this is what's coming up to uh, the next zone, which will be 324. So we reclaimed 317 bullish. A uh, little bit of a rejection here again today at 50-day moving average. So tomorrow, we're either going to confirm, reclaim, and build this 321 level and go to 324, or we're going to open up, test this 321 level, get rejected again, and then everything will get pulled out. It, it, this, this is one of those days that there really is no room for interpretation. That's it. Either over 321 bullish, under 321 bearish, 
and everything else in between. You can fight all you want on different platforms, but the price action is the price action and technical analysis, from what I understand, does work uh, pretty well. So today's session, uh, very aggressive, right? You, got, you had a very aggressive move. You had continuation in Tesla. You had continuation in Roku. Uh, but not only did those names continue, right? You had names that were kind of dead for a long time, right? The Netflixes of the world, uh, the NVIDIAs of the world, uh, Square uh, was dead, got an upgrade today. Uh, applied materials that we talked about for the last couple of days uh, really woke up. They got upgraded today, exploded again. So there was a lot of big volume coming in, especially uh, on the semiconductor names that, you know, again, if you believe in technical analysis, this is the highest close in this whole formation, uh, reclaiming this whole supply. So the semiconductors were, were the go, right? They were the green light today. Uh, in this in this rally, but the one thing that I will tell you, and you know, of, of all the pivots today, uh, with you know, with the Netflix of the world and all that stuff, and the videos of the world, this one frustrated me to no degree, right? So, if you guys remember, I've, I've been talking about Texas Instruments for a couple of days, right? So it got rejected several times here at uh, 189. Again, I, I I don't go into detail about trades. That work. That's supposed to work. That's the whole point. You know, they, they you know buyers reclaim supply, clean up sellers. Stocks going to go higher. Sellers clean up buyers. Stocks going to go lower. There's not a lot of things to talk about. But this is one of those names that I usually don't trade. Right? I, I don't usually put a lot of emphasis because if there is going to be a rally in semiconductors, right? I'm not going to Texas Instruments. Right? I'm not going to I don't know uh, Lamb Research or Marvel, right? I'm going to Nvidia. Okay, that's that's the mod. That you know that's the beta name that gets grow that gets really really going. So today I decided, hey, you know what? I'm going to trade Texas Instruments. Okay, right? Semiconductors rally, everything is exploding. So I decide to buy Texas Instruments. So I buy Texas Instruments. You know, th four day consolidation. Semis are exploding. Yada yada yada. The stock goes down. You know, stock goes down. Um, again, it's not that I lost a lot on it. You know, I lost about 73 cents. But the point is, how can you explain the New York Stock Exchange stock? And this is where we talk about the difference between a really free market with uh, NASDAQ names that are ECN driven, right, uh, that are order driven compared to Texas Instruments. That's a New York Stock Exchange stock. And although it is a member of multitude, right, of, of different indexes, there is a specialist, right? And the specialist is, is, is a guy. And years ago, it was like a license to steal before all these ECNs started popping up and people were available to go point and click instead of routing to the specialist in the New York Stock Exchange. But they're still there. And the one thing that I keep on reminding myself is the reason why I don't trade many New York Stock Exchange stocks, you're not going to get that $9 candle that you can in NVIDIA or that $12 can in Tesla or Amazon because there's somebody watching the and controlling the order flow, right? The, the, the whole point of listing on the New York Stock Exchange is somebody knows the buyers, knows the sellers, and they're going to keep an orderly book. And let's be honest, right? Traders are going to run after NVIDIA. They're going to run after Netflix. They're going to run after Facebook and Apple. Ain't nobody running after Texas Instruments, right? Lesson learned over and over again. And yada, yada, yada. Um, I sell the stock down 73 cents. It goes down to $1.80. So what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to sit there down $5 on the trade before it goes up and yada, 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 and all that stuff, fast money, all that stuff. Da, 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 da. They, you know, they got the stock going and finally went up like 60, 70 cents. So the idea that you have to sit in a trade down three, four dollars with a specialist controlling the book to make 50, 60 cents. Again, not really what I want to do in my life. And this is, again, the, the biggest difference between trading listed securities versus trading uh, over-the-counter names and over-the-counter is anything that's not listed. It's not bulletin boards. It's just anything that's not listed uh, on an exchange. And the moral of the story is, again, I know my limits. I, I never remember the stocks that work. They're supposed to work. That's exactly what you want to accomplish when you have a process, when you have a routine. But you always stick in mind the names that don't work. And this is a name. And again, it wasn't the, the, the worst loss in the world, 73 cents. But the point is you could avoid the specialist names. You could avoid the stocks. That's why AMD is a lot of people like AMD. I hate it. I personally hate the stock. And kind of for the same reason, there's a specialist involved. Although you have the alternative aggression because of um, you know, because of so many traders in love with the stock, but it kind of does trade exactly the same way. And this is why 
I don't do the Walmarts of the world or the Targets of the world or the IBMs of the world or the Texas Instruments anymore because of that matter. The last thing you want to do is have that artificial kind of halt to the moves. Okay, you want that free market that if there is buying pressure, it's not going to go up 25 cents. It's going to go up four dollars and 25 cents. And unfortunately, I keep on reminding myself, stick to your lane, right? Just stick to your lane. Other than that, uh, some pretty, pretty aggressive action uh, in the markets. Uh, Netflix was uh, really, really good. I caught some Netflix. So the, the, the key is always, folks, and I, and I say this all the time, not every stock is built different is built the same. Not every trader is built the same. There's a reason why I trade beta. There's a reason why I trade 90% uh, of the stocks. It's the same 12 stocks because we know what to expect from them. Uh, we understand their tendencies. We understand why they stole out. We understand why they explode. And when you trade random stocks, and again, not that Texan is a random stock out of nowhere, but it's random to me. When you trade random stocks, you're going to trade. You, you're going to get more chances than not very, very random results. And I kind of want, want to share uh, my little experience here with a random name that I usually uh, don't trade. Other than that, a uh, very, very aggressive session here. Uh, let's talk about the names here. Square uh, upgraded this morning. Uh, 218 needs to build. Uh, Square went nuts or absolutely went nuts. So here is the 218, right? Here's the 218 right here. Just went out of its mind and went all the way uh, into the 230s. Huge move. Just an absolute huge move in Square. Uh, Texas N... Texas you know, instruments could go eat a bag of fill in the blank. I don't, I just don't care. Uh, AMAT never gave that, you know, never gave that entry. And the reason why I didn't put a pivot in, uh, it was above that 29 level. There was an opening range high of 130. And I apologize. I should have put it on the Twitter feed. I did not. It took out that 130 and just went absolutely nuts. Went to like 134, uh, 135. So I apologize. I just did, I couldn't find a really, really good area. That opening range high provided that value, but I apologize for that. Uh, GameStop, I still like, never triggered. Uh, good job on Boeing. Uh, 255 uh, needs to build. Here was Boeing, right? Here's the 255. It took out this whole range, 255, and traded right to its early supply at 258, and it started selling off after that. Uh, Roku, just a monster. Uh, if it opens below 315, uh, it, it, just, it just went nuts. So here was Roku. It opened right at that 315 level. And you can see just went absolutely nuts, traded all the way up to that 329 level, big move on Roku. And again, this is the, if this is if you've been watching this broadcast, you know, for the last even three, four days, you know, you, you know how important that 317 number was, right? Uh, 317 huge macro area needs to reclaim. And here are the cues, right? They finally got got above this whole macro range of 317 and traded right just a tad underneath 321, which obviously for tomorrow becomes a huge number uh, as well. So big move on the Q's macro. And NVIDIA went absolutely nuts. Uh, 523 needs to build. And NVIDIA is coming up to uh, a big macro area as well. So here is the 523, right? Here is the 523. And it went all the way up to 539. Now, why is 539 important, right? It hit the 50-day moving average. So this is kind of like the Q's. If the Q's reclaim... I love the video for tomorrow. If the cues reclaim and the video reclaims, look how much room you have up. A lot of potential. We don't know if it's going to reclaim. We don't know if it's going to test. We don't know if it's going to confirm. But cross your fingers, right? If NASDAQ confirms tomorrow, there's a very, very good chance uh, the video will do as well. So big, big move on the video as well. Uh, Boeing, blah, blah, blah. We just talked about Boeing, NVIDIA, take on the way up, big move there. Uh, Netflix, I, it actually took me two trades on Netflix to get it going. Um, I bought it the first time, it ran up a dollar and just really, really sold out. So I sold it, made a cup of coffee, bought it on the opening range highs off that 522. And Netflix, you know, had a big move, right? So here's the whole channel here. Uh, it actually traded all the way up to 528. Um, it's still not... It's still not in the sweet spot yet. I, I like a lot of things better uh, for Netflix than Netflix for tomorrow. But at least, again, like I said, most of the stocks need baby steps to get up with the levels. You can see where macro it needs to recall. But again, Netflix definitely uh, helped me out today. Uh, first supply is 524. It actually went a little higher to 525 in that first move. Uh, 21 next stop. That's exactly where it got. Amazon was disappointing today. Um, I didn't trade Amazon. Uh, I was actually waiting for tomorrow. 
Uh, but Amazon, you know, it, 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 it took out that 14, went up like five bucks and then really reversed pretty aggressively. Not sure what happened there. The size buyer came in uh, for the 3150. So it's very, very odd to see why Amazon got rejected. And this is definitely the last pivot of the day. Microsoft exploded, right? We talked about uh, Microsoft 237 uh, several times. So here was Microsoft uh, 237, right? It got rejected here once, twice, three times, finally confirmed that 37 and went right into supply of 239. So again, we want to give the bulls uh, the benefit of the doubt tomorrow. Uh, I can't stress the importance uh, of that 321 level tomorrow on the NASDAQ 100. If it goes, we have a lot of stocks uh, that we're watching for tomorrow as well. The Roku's of the world, again, the NVIDIA, especially NVIDIA, had big, big macro potential. So I'm crossing my fingers uh, that we finally confirm tomorrow. Um, Snow, I kind of like as well. Not bad. You know, I don't love it, but I like it enough, right? Snow has been rejected off the several same area several times here. looks pretty good as well. Uh, Activision, right? They make, uh, what the hell do they make? One of these, one of these video games that are, you can see here, got rejected several times on the five, you know, on that 50 day moving average. If it reclaims, it's going to wake up as well. So we're set up for tomorrow. Now the question is, do the bulls sink or do the bulls swim to be determined? Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.